So what's the story with the jumpers inside the Drongo sensor? You'll find there's four little jumpers where you can fit this little black jumper thingy on each of those four positions. What do they mean? How do they work? Well, there's four of them. We've got the Sense, you've got the X2, you've got the TXP, and you've got the LED. Now let's start with the LED jumper. That jumper enables or disables this LED that's right next to the sensor. That LED would switch on every time it triggers and it would light up this lens here in front so you can see when it triggers. It's very handy for when you're setting the unit up, but it's a security risk because people can then see that you have a sensor and they can see when it triggers and also it uses a bit of battery power. So typically we recommend switch it on, put the jumper in while you're setting the thing up but once you're done and you're happy the system is working as you want it, take it out so the LED is off, no one has to know about it, and you can save a bit of battery. Then, next up, we've got the TXP jumper. That is short for transmit power. Every time this sensor triggers, it sends out, I think it's about 30 messages back to the voice alert. Now, we are hoping that one of those 30 will actually arrive intact. Now the further the range is away from the, from the base unit, the less likely we are for all 30 or for one of those 30 messages to, have, to arrive intact. So when you fit that jumper, you're actually doubling the number of, of, of messages that we send. It's no longer 30, it's 60. So it takes a bit longer to transmit, uses a bit more power, but it improves your reliability when you're at the extremes of your range. So, I would normally recommend don't use it, but if you find that you're like on the fringes of your range, then perhaps try using that sensor. That setting, I mean. The third jumper is the X2. We sometimes refer to it as the double knock. In normally when you don't have it fitted, this sensor will trigger if it finds two peaks in the signal within like three seconds, then it will trigger. That's a normal setting. But if you have the sensor in a place where you expect the movement to be quite close, you can actually afford to fit that jumper because then the sensor requires to see twice as many, twice as much movement before it will actually trigger. And this can vastly cut down on false trigger events. Normally you shouldn't have false triggers anyway if you install it properly, but there are cases where the double knock feature can save your ass. The last one is called the sense jumper. Normally, if you do not fit that uh, jumper, the sensor has a fixed sensitivity and it will always handle itself exactly the same way. But in certain cases, we can fit that, that jumper and the sensor will become, uh, will have like a dynamic sensitivity, which allows it to be much, much, much more sensitive in installations where you can afford that. So if we know there's no possibility for false trigger, there are no nothing no trees no nothing close by and this thing will be looking at a concrete jungle when there's no reason this thing cannot be made much more sensitive and we call it dynamic sensitivity because it actually looks at the signal environment and automatically makes itself more or less sensitive depending on the environment but normally it's better to just have a fixed sensitivity which is not as sensitive because it's good enough for most applications